Hi, I'm Chris Smith, and this is my magazine band. Thought it'd be rather nice for you to see the three pages I produced first. Here's the front cover. Contents page. And last but not least, double page spread. Right. One of my goals from the very start was to produce a music magazine that was based entirely on the most important aspect of it, the music. I needed to find the right balance, I didn't want too much joking about in the magazine, and I didn't want the magazine to appear boring and something that look, look, looks like it would be aimed for people in their midlife crisis, like Jess there. <laughs> now you can see with the front cover in slide two, I've decided to keep with magazine design etiquette, so to speak. I've made sure the vast majority of it on the left third, and then also included a number of features you'd expect to find in a typical music magazine in stores. Some examples of this are the barcode, the slogo, and a pull quote to go with the main cover artist. While it's not that noticeable, I've also covered the master slightly with a picture. This is a technique a number of good magazines use because it's already a known magazine. Obviously because of this, it wouldn't be a good idea to be covering up a number of letters but slightly obscuring the last letter, as I feel it doesn't make a difference if anything it actually enhances the images of the masthead. First and foremost, and it's a case of stating the obvious, one of the social groups that we interest in my magazine is anyone who actually likes music. I generally feel my magazine can appeal to a wide variety of people from a range of different backgrounds. However, there are obviously some social groups that will have no interest in purchasing my magazine. Trying to promote this magazine to cheesy pop types or more gothic types would be utterly pointless and a complete waste of time. We have an example here, some cheesy pop. People who like that probably aren't going to really like my magazine. To have a successful product, you actually want it being stocked in as many places as possible. This likely leads to more sales and a potential for increased reputation in the magazine. The main hope would to have it be stored in all good magazine stores, like WH Smith, and some rubbish ones as well. I'd also like the magazine to be available at issue. While this is a completely different ball game to someone like WH Smith, I feel my magazine is a stage where it can be stocked at both places and be a success. One final thing is that I've decided to make my magazine a weekly magazine. This makes it harder to get subscriptions to a magazine than say something that is produced monthly. Because of this, it would be likely I'd introduce a number of special offers to sort of promote the magazine. When I was in the preliminary stages of my magazine product, I had a very broad range in mind for the audience I wanted to buy my magazine. I originally aimed the magazine at people within the 18 to say 35 age range and wanted to produce something that would be suitable for both genders. As the magazine process progressed, it became clear I was starting to target more of the younger end of the scale of my target audience for age. This is reflected in the survey results I collected after my project was uh, finished. Here are the examples. We've got the age group here, which shows that 93% thought it was for 17 to 21 year olds. You've got the gender here, which may be slightly more, not as sort of clear cut, so it shows that both genders have been targeted and I've sort of hit my uh, target range. I used the wonders of Surrey Monkey twice during this product. Once before the start of making my magazine to get a grasp of what my target audience's taste in music and music magazine speeches were, I obviously asked a few questions to get to know them. Simple. Some of the questions in the two would have related to each other. Like one of the questions in the first saver was, what's your favourite music magazine? And then in the second one, what magazine is band most like? The two of these go together nicely so you get a good idea of whether you've hit your target audience or not. Again, a couple of examples here. Survey before the main product, obviously people one way around. Survey before the main product, people obviously mainly interested in Karanga and me. And then you've got after the finished magazine, and people think it's most on magazine. I've hit my target audience, happy days. You hit your target audience because you were you you targeted those in the first place, did yeah. you? Well well well, where to begin? The production of our music magazine was a massive journey. A massive journey that had many obstacles, as at the start I was pretty much clueless with everything I had to use. At the start I had no idea you could upload PowerPoint presentations onto the internet. It's a rather handy tool, I'm sure you'll all agree. And onto Photoshop. It took me weeks to realise what on earth layers actually did. So as you can guess from this, I pretty struggled in the earlier stages. After that I started to realise even more basic things, like actually being able to change colours, zooming in on the image, and even changing the size without distorting the picture. Then it started to get really advanced. The use of magic wand and a razor were added to my Photoshop repertoire. Finally, a key part of my double page spread was to learn about the use of brushes. Without learning this, my double page spread wouldn't look anywhere near as good as it the finished product actually does. Alright, and here is my Clurie Music Magazine. 
got a nice cover artist, but it looks really amateurish, and I'll go cover that in the next slide. The very first thing to improve for my preliminary task was the actual cover shot taken. The main music magazine task has a picture that allows for plenty of space on the left third here, and with a face lower to allow more space at the top. As you can see from here, I've sort of had to adjust the masthead so it's in a different place and sort of had to work with it. The second thing is the cover, the color of the cover lines. Both magazines have used the stroke feature quite a lot, but the black and white on the magazine here is far more professional than the amateurish green and white used in the previous uh, magazine product. Thirdly, there are far more advanced features in the final main project. The film strip along the bottom here is a very good effect, and the difference in masthead, as you can see, is quite clearly vast. Being able to put text behind a picture is something that would have been beyond comprehension in the preliminary task. It's harder to see on the smaller picture here, but I've used a brush to like, darken the uh, brick wall. It's, if you looked at a before and after picture, it's shown really well, and I think it sort of complements the style I've gone with my front cover. And there you go. Thanks very much, Chris. Can we have a look again at your front cover? Do you have a, a yeah, slide sure. of your... Fantastic, okay. Codes and conventions. Forms and conventions. Just talk us through what's what's apparent on your on your okay. front page in terms of what you conform to and what you might have. Well, I've got the logo here. I've got the masthead here. Something I've done, as I've mentioned earlier, I've sort of covered the uh, letter D. Obviously, I thought it works quite well. I've got some cover lines here. They've pull quote here to go to the main article. And I've got see the issue number, date, price, etc., and finally a barcode to go with it. Great, thanks very much for that. So pretty much, it, it, it's kind of conformed to most... It pretty much, because it does certainly on the front cover. Yeah. yeah, okay. You mentioned briefly about what social groups are represented in your magazine. Can you just be a little bit more sort of specific? What social groups are, are represented in your magazine? See, I've always said I want to expand to quite a few people. Mm -hmm. My survey results have obviously sort of restricted it slightly, so maybe I'm looking more towards teenagers who have more of an interest in rock music. Well, I don't really want to stop at that. If there's obviously other people I can expand to, I'd love to do that. But primarily it's teenagers who are into rock yeah. slash indie. Slash indie, yeah. Okay. Um, for your um, USP, well, how did you explain your, your USP? Um, well, the first thing I really wanted to do was just make it entirely music based. I didn't want to joke around, josh around like quite a few magazines do. Obviously loads focused about 90% on music, I wanted it to be 99% on the music. It's a pure music magazine? Pure music magazine, none of the nonsense that goes with it. Okay, do you have any questions for anyone? Um, what inspired you for the design of the Well, uh, I think it kind of goes well with the brick wall background. I think the colours sort of uh, complement each other well. See. As I mentioned earlier, I like the fact that it goes behind the actual main image as well. But you're not going to have a brick wall for every single wish. No, so obviously. In, in it's just a, it goes well with the style and the map that artists I've chosen. What you're getting at, in terms of the font, uh, why yeah. did you choose that font? Why did you choose well, that? Uh, in terms of the font, it stands out, doesn't it? As, yes. I, as you saw on the uh, preliminary product, mm. it was very basic, very boring, very amateurish. This is, looks far more professional. It stands out. It goes straight to you. You saw that in a magazine shop, you'd notice it straight away. Thanks very much.